So in a crazy piece of news today, Microsoft announced a 10-year deal with Nintendo, a very similar deal that they had put on the table for Sony to keep Call of Duty on the PlayStation platform. Well, Phil Spencer just came out in a tweet today and announced that he is going to be putting, assuming the Activision merger goes through, uh, he's going to be putting Call of Duty on Nintendo platforms for at least 10 years going into the future. So let's look at some of the implications of that and figure out exactly what that's going to mean. So 10 years is a long time, folks. 10 years. Uh, right now we're in coming into what the sixth year of the Switch's lifespan. So, you know, for the foreseeable future, assuming this deal goes through sometime next year, uh, a lot of people are speculating this is going to be wrapped up by summer of 2023, if it's going to go through at all. And uh, so what can we expect on the Switch next year in terms of Call of Duty? What does that 10-year commitment mean? Are we going to see something like Warzone 2 on the Nintendo Switch? I don't know. we got to take a step back and really analyze what this could mean for the Nintendo Switch. People have been asking for Call of Duty games to come to the Switch since the Switch was launched. We had a Call of Duty game, a couple of them actually, I believe, on the Wii U, but we have not had a single Call of Duty game on the Nintendo Switch up to this point. The Switch's life cycle is at least three quarters done at this point. So what could we reasonably expect to see come to the Nintendo Switch? Well, there's a few things that immediately jump to mind here. First of all, uh, Call of Duty, Activision have a very successful mobile Call of Duty game, Call of Duty Mobile. Uh, it works great on powerful phones and tablets and things like that, and it's pretty popular. Now, a lot of people enjoy playing that game with a controller, something like the Razer Kishi or one of those, uh, you know, clips that you can hook up an Xbox controller or something. Uh, to your phone, your Android device, or whatever, and play Call of Duty Mobile on the go, uh, I think there's a pretty good chance that there could be a port of Call of Duty Mobile to the Nintendo Switch next year. I think coinciding, you know, pretty shortly after this deal goes through. Uh, I think that's the the first and most likely suspect to come to the Nintendo Switch. We are the Nintendo Switch simply can't run something like Warzone, uh, you know, an open platform multiplayer game. We know what issues the Nintendo Switch has with online in the first place. Uh, you know, online with the Switch, especially running Wi-Fi and handheld, is just not great. So I don't think we're going to see something as intensive as the new Warzone 2 uh, you know, or even something like the, you know, the brand new Call of Duty come to the Switch right away. But 10 years is a long, long time. Presumably sometime in the next one to three years, we're going to see Nintendo step into their next generation of consoles. And of course, what is that going to be? I just made a video uh, yesterday or the day before talking about managing expectations for Nintendo's next generation console. Do we think it's going to be a 4K powerhouse uh, that rivals the PS5 and the Xbox Series X? Absolutely not. Uh, looking at something like the Steam Deck, for example, which could run and does run Call of Duty if you want to install Windows on it, for example, it will run Warzone. Uh, looking at the Steam Deck, it is much, much, much more powerful than the Switch. And uh, I don't think Nintendo's next-gen device is going to be any more powerful than the Steam Deck. In fact, it is my guess that it'll be somewhat less powerful than the Steam Deck. Uh, so, managing those expectations, what is that 10-year roadmap going to look like? What kinds of Call of Duty experiences can we expect over the next two or three years as Microsoft works to assimilate Activision Blizzard and you know bring all of these IPs into the wheelhouse and get them out to all of these different platforms. Phil Spencer's made some pretty big promises, but now it's time for Activision to have to follow through 
on these promises by creating ports of some of these games that could actually run potentially on the Nintendo Switch or its successor in the next year to, as I say, one to three years, I think would be a pretty uh, reasonable timeline to say that we're going to see either a Switch Pro or a Switch, uh, you know, successor coming to market. My guess is 2024, maybe March 2024, we're going to see a successor, but I could be crazy wrong. People have been talking about this for a long time, but let's get down to the meat and potatoes of the conversation, shall we? What can we expect to see? Well, we know right now that the Switch is capable of running, uh, you know, three PS3 and Xbox 360 era games pretty darn well. So I think it is reasonable to assume, uh, that we could see some ports coming of some of those older games from the golden era of Call of Duty. I'm talking Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3. Uh, you know, I could think Activision could do a collection, for example, uh, that would run fantastic on the Switch of Black Ops 1 and 2 collection remastered, let's say. Uh, which would run great uh, with single player and local co-op. All of the great local co-op modes in those games would look great uh, on the Nintendo Switch. And I think they would be a very welcome addition to the Switch library, which is frankly quite lacking in first-person shooters of virtually any kind. Uh, so it would be a welcome addition, and I think it would be a pretty big seller if they can get it to market fast enough on the Switch. If something like that could come to the market in 2023, when people are hungry for first-person shooter content on the N Nintendo Switch before the announcement of a successor that people would be, say, willing to wait for for six months or a year until it comes out, I think something like a Call of Duty Black Ops collection could be a fantastic thing on the Nintendo Switch, and the same goes for Modern Warfare. Uh, 1, 2, and 3. You could do a Modern Warfare collection. Same with the Black Ops, whether you do 1 and 2. Uh, you know, they've already remastered Modern Warfare 1 and 2 uh, for modern consoles, but they could kind of do a demaster of the remasters for the Switch, or they could just port the original 360 and PS3 titles. I don't know, some other things that really come to mind. I think it's a pretty obvious gimme uh, that they're going to drop Call of Duty Mobile on there because that is the property they have that is most ready in the oven at this point. Uh, you know, things that are running well on mobile uh, can usually be ported over to the Switch very, very easily, very, very quickly. You know, of course, no port is done overnight. It's not as simple as dragging and dropping a couple of boxes. You know, it does have to be redesigned to some degree. There is effort that goes into the port, but I have a feeling that Call of Duty Mobile will be the easiest port for them to do to get some version of Call of Duty onto the Nintendo Switch. But what else does that mean? What else does that 10-year commitment entail? Uh, so what do you guys think about the idea of something like a Black Ops collection or a Modern Warfare collection or even going back to some of the very early Call of Duties? Phil Spencer also made a commitment to keep the Call of Duty franchise on Steam, which is great news for me because I absolutely love my Steam Deck and uh, I love Steam on my computer. Uh, that's really my primary way of playing right now is between Steam and Nintendo. So this is great news for me on both fronts. But uh, what do you guys think? Down in the comments below, let me know. What do you think is going to be the future for Nintendo? Of course, once we get into that uh, next-gen sort of, uh, you know, Nintendo situation in the next couple of years, we will hopefully have the horsepower to be able to run some of the PS4-era Call of Duty games. We might even be able to run something like the original Warzone or, some, you know, Call of Duty Call, uh, Cold War or something like that might actually run on the next-gen. Uh, you know, we've seen some amazing ports, but I wonder whether Activision and Microsoft are really going to invest the capital to, you know, demaster uh, some of these high-end games after the fact. Because Call of Duty, 
Call of Duty is this kind of yearly release, and people don't go back to old Call of Duty games as much. At least the general public, the masses don't. Somebody like me, I love to go back and play the old Modern Warfare games or World War II. Or, you know, there's so many games that I do love to go back to and play the multiplayer couch co-op, that sort of thing. But uh, a lot of people are really just on the yearly cycle, the yearly bandwagon. The new one comes out, you switch to the new one, you play that one for six, eight, nine months, you get bored of it, whatever, you wait for the next one to come out. So I wonder how many people are going to be interested, and Activision may be wondering how many people are actually going to be interested in going back to some of these older titles, at least as they stand, without some kind of, you know, extra content or some reason to revisit those so let me know down in the comments below what do you think you would like to see and what do you think you're likely to see on the nintendo switch over that 10 year commitment thanks so much for watching thanks for subscribing stay classy